for Vibe 105, this is Fatima the Same covering the Caribbean Tales International Film Festival. And in focus today is the animated feature Opal, an Afro fantasy film that featured at the festival. The film has already won 48 awards and 73 nominations worldwide. And joining me today at the Vibe 105 studios is the multi time award winning director Alan Biddard. Alan is also the creator of the first ever Caribbean animated TV series, Battle Dream Chronicles. Opal is his second animated feature. Welcome to Vibe, Alan. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on your film featuring at the Caribbean Tales International Film Festival. But this isn't the first time for you at the festival, is it? No, that's my second time. Um, I presented my first feature film, Battle Dream Chronicle. And uh, well, I was not there for Battle Dream. I was there for the series Battle Dream Chronicles. Um, that is, um, that, that, that was initially a uh, uh, television pitch. Uh, and I was I, I, I was shortlisted uh, for the big pitch of the Caribbean Tales International Film Festival, and um, this time I was it. <laughs> so. Well, it's wonderful to have you back at the festival. For our audiences, Alan, what is the film Opal about? Opal is a, is an animation feature film about a young princess called. Opal, who live in in a, in a magic world uh, where everything is related to ma to magic, and all this magic um, come from her. So, so she is the source of of all the magic in this magical kingdom. The magic is tied to her mood. So if she's happy, the kingdom thrives, and if she sighs, if she's sad, the kingdom dies. And um, at the beginning of, of the film, uh, a couple of farmers um, find out that their flowers are dying and they are calling a, um, a kind of magic creature, <laughs> a magic sorcerer to, to help them to find out why. The, the movie has a dark undertone to it. Uh, it addresses some rather important themes of uh, family dynamics, abuse and healing. And with all black characters, where did the idea come from? Well, initially, I, I, I watched many of the film about child abuse, um, especially uh, in, in the context of incest. And I never found this um, this this empath this empathy that I was looking for, and um, uh, I start thinking that we all know what is, for example, we all know what is uh, what is a flu. We all know what is um, uh, there's many diseases that we know, but we don't know what is going through um, the pain of a child who is in this kind of situation. So I wanted to create a film that would uh, show to everyone what kind of pain this is about and why we have to address it. Because I don't know if it's the same in, in Canada, but in, 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 in France, um, people tend to rationalize a lot of things and they tend to, ra to rationalize um, feelings and uh, pain too. And uh, this has um, very uh, problematic consequences because, uh, for, for example, um, when we're talking about incest, some people think that it's not that bad. For example, when you have uh, um, someone who was raped during their childhood and they, they are going to actually say something at the age of 25 a lot of people don't understand why they are waiting so long um, and some people are even going to to believe that they are they are participating in 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 this that that was not real rape so i really wanted to 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 show this crime through a new light and um, bring more empathy uh, uh, for that, because we have there's 
there's no empathy, there's, there were no empathy be, before. And um, even in the justice system in, in France, uh, we had uh, two or three uh, cases where the judge saw that um, the the child was uh, was was giving uh, her consent to the rape. Um, we had a case, uh, I think, it three 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 years ago, where um, we had someone um, raping a kid of eleven years old, and uh, it was said that um, the girl gave her consent and. All of that, all this notion wouldn't exist if it was clear for everybody that uh, this is the type of pain people are going through and we need to we need to address it. Right. A particular element that I was drawn to was this beautiful blend of Afro-Caribbean stylized work, especially because of the art. So I'm talking in terms of the style, the costumes, the vibrant colors, the, the ancient Egyptian work. I'm very interested in learning about the conversations and the process that went into bringing all of this to life. It's free, 3D animation, so we have some great um, freedom when we create, but we still need to conceptualize everything and design everything. And in this, in, 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 in this process, we have to give a personality to the background, to the environment. And uh, that's the moment when we have to infuse our culture, our cultural elements, what makes us different. Because the idea is not to show what everybody has already seen, but to show what is, is um, uh, things that maybe people in, in my island of Martinique, for example, have already seen, but in the rest of the world, we are not used to that. So. Um, uh, the idea was to re re represent all that. There's one thing that is particular in Martinique, it's the color, uh, especially, well, uh, I've, I stayed in the city of Paris for a, <laughs> a long time, and there is one thing that is really surprising, it's, um, it's really gray. It's really great, and uh, in 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 the Caribbean, it's really colorful, and I wanted to show that. At the same time, uh, culturally speaking, when I grew up in 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 Martinique, um, we wanted to get closer to the European culture, so that was what was trendy. Uh, but right now there is um, there is a movement we we really try trying to reconnect with our African roots. So there is this mix of Caribbean and and Africanity, and uh, I wanted to show this to through the um, through the background uh, and the location. So that that was what in, inspired um, this um, uh, this production design. There were multiple accents that were used throughout the film. Was that intentional? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, initially, I wanted to mix many accents. I, I didn't forcibly learn the right accent uh, for every character because, uh, well, um, we were supposed to to record the, the record the voice um, uh, in Martinique, but in in many other countries too, if we could. But the problem was the pandemic, and uh, because of the pandemic, we had to be really really fast. Um, thankfully, in in Martinique, uh, there are people who. who we're speaking English really, really well, and uh, but they, they had different type of accent. So um, instead of seeing this as a problem, we we actually brought everything <laughs> to create something really different. That that was not the first time uh, I was doing that because for my series pilot. Um, Battle Rim Chron Chronicles, um, produced by the Caribbean Tales. Um, we already did this with a uh, Jamaican accent, uh, um, Bar Barbadian ac accent, 
Trinidad accent. We we try to mix all of that, and the mix was really interesting because the audience um, reacted in a very new way <laughs> uh, compared to the type of animation where everything is in the same accent. So um, I believe that this was one of the highlights of, of this series pilot, and I wanted to reproduce this for the feature film. That sounds wonderful. The main character, that of the young princess, Opal, is a very powerful personality. But Black characters have not always had such representation, especially in animation. How, according to you as a filmmaker, has Black representation in animated films and features uh, features evolved over the years? And where does it stand today? It has evolved a lot. <laughs> uh, when, I, when I grew up, uh, in the <clears throat> uh, the end of the 70s, the beginning of the um, uh, the, the 80s and 90s, um, there was no representation. Um, I the first time I saw black character in uh, in an animation film that was in 19, 1998. Um, but before that, mm, no, there, 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 there was some attempt. Uh, from the Japanese, but it was, um, I'm not going to say racist, but not not far, <laughs> not far from, uh, so it, it was not really a, a, a positive representation. But uh, um, in, in, in the 2000s, we start seeing more and more uh, Black people in, in an, uh, animation, um, and that was really a great thing. Today, it's the, the uh, Black characters are much more represented in animation even if we still have we we, we still have to do more but um compared to where i'm coming from compared to what i knew when i was a kid uh, um, at least kids of this era have something that look like them because when i when i grew up there was literally nothing look looking like me where can our audiences watch the film Opal? Um, so they, they, they can watch it in the in 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 the Caribbean Tales <laughs> Film Festival, and um, uh, so if they follow my 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 social n n network, I constantly uh, say which which festival selecting the film. So they, some festival are. Uh, hybrid so they will allow everybody to see it in streaming and uh, beyond that i'm actually um, in negotiation with a distributor to 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 see um, uh, what we what future we can give to the to the film and it's going well so i'm keeping my finger crossed uh for making it available for everybody so thank you so much alan unfortunately that's all the time we have for today thank you once again for joining us and congratulations on your film thank you very much